Hello, folks, and welcome back to Rugby Ascendant. This is Chris in central Pennsylvania with a preview and a prediction for the Curry Cup final for 2022. What in a season it has been. The first season for United Rugby Championship, seeing South African sides, four top sides, headed off to play in what used to be the Guinness Pro 14, Pro 12 before that, which once upon a time had the Cheetahs and the Southern Kings in the tournament for balancing them unfairly and unceremoniously out of the competition. Well, they were replaced in what became the United Rugby Championship with Western Province. Well, the Stormers, actually, not Western Province, the Stormers. With the Stormers, the Bulls, the Lions, and the Sharks. Well, three of those sides made the playoffs in this inaugural URC season, the Sharks, the Bulls, and the Stormers. And it went down to the final in Cape Town, two South African sides, an all-South African final in a competition that many in the Northern Hemisphere question whether there should even be South African sides in it. Well, I think we've settled that dispute with an all-South African final. And the Stormers, yes, having won that one, 18 to 13, exactly the score predicted by five points. Ooh, that was pretty lucky on my part. But now it's time for the Curry Cup final, a competition, the oldest domestic rugby competition on the planet. Ladies and gentlemen, the Curry Cup has been around for well over a century, about 130 years now. And despite its length, despite its um, longevity, despite its durability, the Curry Cup has come under assault, being accused of being a second-rate competition. And no less than the Bulls coach, Het Smile, denigrated this recently, saying that, well, you know, with URC, you know, Maybe we should consider consigning the curry chop to the dustbin of history or in a museum. Those are my words, not his, but he did say put it in a museum. Now, that's really just sour grapes, if you ask me. Had the Bulls made it to the final, they would probably not be complaining. The Bulls were on the verge of winning the third consecutive curry cup title, but they lost out. When they were defeated at home at Loftus Fest, fell by the Greek was, and rather handily, it wasn't as close as the final score indicated. The Greek was really put it to the Bulls at Loftus Fest, fell. Now, they'll come back with the excuse that, well, you know, a lot of our top flight players were in the URC, but that's your responsibility to manage your club. You are a top flight club. And it's just sad to see that sort of thing take place, but let's not talk about Hatzmal and the complaints about Curry Cup. Let's talk about the exciting part here, folks. Curry Cup has two teams in it. They're rather unlikely finalists. Now for their, to their credit, the, Greek was from Kimberley, have been playing rather well the past few seasons, getting his semifinals. And this season, they finished seven and five, kind of an up and down season. A few early losses, it kind of put them behind the eight ball, but they recovered well and finished on a high note and won seven five. In fact, they played this weekend's opponent, the Pumas, in Nelspruit at Umbumbela Stadium just a few weeks ago. They were trailing 30 to 14 to halftime, came back and won that game 45 to 44. A stunning comeback, which put them in prime position. So they wound up taking on the Bulls because the Bulls were the number two seed and they beat them at home. And then a rather unlikely outcome, we saw the Pumas go into Bloemfontein to take on the top seeded Cheetahs, who had gone nine wins and no losses on the trot before losing two games late in the season. The Cheetahs, the top seeded Cheetahs in Bluffington at home, leading late in the game, two late tries in the last five minutes by the Pumas. A shocking result. They defeat the Cheetahs at home at Toyota Stadium in Bluffington, and they go on 38 to 35 to the final, an unlikely final. The Pumas finished the season five and seven, one the semifinal, and now find themselves in the final. And in Kimberly, this game is going to be in Kimberly, folks. And because the South African authorities have finally, belatedly, after the URC final, which was asinine of them just a few days after that, have lifted all restrictions on gatherings after two years and three months of oppression in South Africa. Finally, folks can go. And tickets are sold out for this. This will be a shocking, shocking crowd to see. We so seldom see large crowds at Kimberley at a rugby union that struggles at times with finances, as do the Pumas, a sold out stadium there for the Vindhoek Draught Greek was. This is exciting stuff, folks, exciting stuff. The underdogs in both semifinals shocked their South African opponents, both the Cheetahs and the Bulls, by pulling off back-to-back -back wins on back-to-back -back days, making for rather unlikely but very intriguing pairing in the historic match in this Curry Cup final. Now, for their part, the Greek was based in Kimberley in the Northern Cape, have not been to a Curry Cup final since 1970. 
They beat the Bulls 30-19 in the semifinals at Loftus Ferrisfeld. They had three Curry Cup titles to their credit. 1899. I don't think anybody's around that saw that one, folks. 1911. Nobody saw that. But their last Curry Cup final in which they won against the Bulls 11-9 was 1970 in their storied history. It's been 52 years since they got to the final, let alone won a final. And here they are on the verge, the cusp of winning again. The 1970 season is hallowed year, a hallowed year in Greek was lore. It's the last time the team qualified Yep, for the Curry Cup final. They went on to beat what was then the Northern Transvaal, now the Blue Bulls. Yep, this will be 52 years later. What, if, what an exciting, exciting development. Now, for their part, the Pumas weren't even in this. They needed Western Province, who had a terrible season. Sorry, I'm a Stormers Province fan, but it was a terrible season. They needed Province to defeat the Sharks in their final day to even get to the postseason. And guess what? Province came through for the Pumas. They won, which meant the five and seven Pumas went on to Bloemfontein to play in that semifinal. Wow. Down 35 to 24 with less than 10 minutes to play in that semifinal. Away in Bloemfontein, the Pumas scored twice converted tries, and both of these were needed, both those conversions. So Jimmy Stonehouse's team is not a mistake getting there. Despite the fact they had a five and seven record, they had the second fewest tries allowed during the season. So their defense has been up to the task. Of course, they might have had the best performance were it not for the Greek was comeback a few weeks ago, winning 45 to 44, giving up several tries there. So there you go. And then last week, they had some big tries from their star man, uh, fly half Eddie Fouché and center Sebastian Leclerc, who had a brace of tries in that game. And this is something exciting, folks. This is really real. This is really exciting stuff. And let's hope that it really kickstarts Curry Cup for future. We've seen terribly tiny size crowds at Curry Cup competitions for several years now. It's very disappointing. The oldest domestic rugby competition on the planet, a storied history, a storied past. Curry Cup and South African fans turn up in droves for varsity rugby or for the Craven Week, which begins here shortly, but they rarely show up for Curry Cup. Let's see the crowd tomorrow. In Kimberly, a sold out crowd, folks. This will be a rocking place. All right, it's time, ladies and gentlemen, for my prediction. You know, I went with my heart and picked my Stormers over the Bulls, even though it seemed like the Bulls had all the momentum and it was the right pick. I even got the spread correct. So, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't bet money for games. But what are we going to go with here? This is anybody's game, ladies and gentlemen. Both teams are playing in great form the last few weeks, and that goes back to when the Greek was beat the Pumas at home. The Pumas played very well. They just let it get away from them late in the game. And then they went into Bloemfontein and won, and now they come to Kimberly. So before I give you a prediction, here are the lineups for this weekend for the Greek was at home. And I've highlighted some players who are going to be crucial or key to a Greek was victory. George Whitehead, who was the star of last week's game, coming off the bench and really nailing it. Munia Hatzenbag, Luther Obi, who's always dangerous on the left wing, and Stefan Ungera, who's back from injury at the scrum half, will be critical players, as well as Janko Ice in the front row and Kudzwe Dube also in the front row. And those are the critical players for this team. Of course, Xander Duplessis at the fly half has been lights out all season. But George Whitehead and Stefan Unger may be the keys to this game. For the visiting Pumas, Devin Williams, Tapifua Mafure, Tinnis De Beer, and at the fly half, Eddie Fouché. I neglected him. Eddie Fouché could be critical in this game, as can be Chris Well September at the scrum half. But the heart of this team is Vili Engelbrecht. Vili Engelbrecht, who's moving on to the Stormers next season. This is a big game for him as well. Edouard Swart in the front row, critically important at that hooker position. Now, the Pumas may have the advantage off the bench. I assess the Pumas bench to be a bit stronger. Simon Rawl had an incredible game when he came into that game last week. Giovan Sneeman, no drop-off when he comes in his scrum half. Ali Majima had a great performance, and uh, Alawano Visaji also strong off the bench. I think the Pumas probably have the advantage on the bench, but despite a stronger bench, this is at home. The Greek was haven't won in 52 years, and they are hungry. They are like, like leopards. I know the Hemsbok is their, their mascot, but they're like leopards sitting up there in the tree, waiting to pounce, licking their chops. The Greek was the first time in 52 years in a final. It's the first ever for the Pumas, but the first time in 52 years for the Greek was at home in Kimberley before a sold-out audience 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going with the Greek was by a converted try. That's my pick. Greek was win by seven over the Pumas in Kimberly. We'll see what happens. You should know that I'm biased. I always root for the Greek was any team that can play on what is essentially like playing on concrete. Have you ever seen their pitch up there in Kimberly? Wow. That's some rough stuff to play on. But there's my prediction. But congratulations to both sides. Congratulations to the Curry Cup that stirred some interest instead of just saying province, the Sharks, or even the Cheetahs or Bulls in the final. Again, we see something fascinating. Puma's first appearance in the Curry Cup final. final and the Greek was back for the first time in 52 years. Tomorrow, 25 June 2022, Greek was by seven over the Pumas. Thanks a lot, folks. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and give us a like or leave some comments behind in the video. We appreciate your support for the Rugby Ascendant segment on Chris White Reports and on the Rugby Ascendant channel. Take care, folks, and grow, go Greek was.